Hello, and welcome back. In this episode, we're going to be printing out the PDF file that you can find down in the description, and we're going to be using that to make some flames, braziers, and that kind of thing. So, without further ado, let's get started. So, as I say, the first thing we'll need to do is print out the fire texture, and we're going to need to do this on both sides of the sheet of paper, so that when we cut it out, we have the same texture on both sides like you can see here. Then I like to take those kind of wavy decorative scissors that you might have seen me use in a couple of other projects and, uh, and using those I'll cut out a long triangular shape from the fire pattern. And we can then go ahead and make a whole bunch of these in various sizes. Now for a base, in this example I've gone ahead and cut out a small circle from some of that clear box material that miniatures are sometimes packaged in. And we'll also need a toothpick or similar Though, in this instance, I'm using the end of a barbecue skewer, just because it's a bit thicker. Okay, so for the assembly, we're going to start by kind of twisting one of the flames around the barbecue skewer, so that it ends up looking something like that. Then we'll need to cut the bottom edge nice and straight, and then it's just a fairly simple matter of gluing that straight edge to the base, using a spot of hot glue. Which should result in this kind of thing. So, uh, you can probably see where I'm going with this. Okay, next we'll take another flame that's roughly the same size and, uh, and do the exact same thing again. However, when gluing it into place, I like to try and position it so that it's kind of entwined with the first piece, if that makes sense. Basically, we're aiming to get it looking something like this. Right then, next we'll do a similar thing with a few of the smaller flames, maybe ones that are around half the size of the first ones, but, uh, but this time we're going to be sticking them around the outside. Though, in truth, there's no real right or wrong way to do this, as, you know, flames can be pretty random, but uh, in this example I've surrounded the larger centre flames with four smaller ones. One at each of the cardinal points, if you know what I mean. And with any luck, that should result in this kind of thing. So, that's the basic flame technique, and I will be referring back to this throughout the video. But if I just quickly bring in one of the lava tiles that I made in a previous episode, you can see how these can be used to represent gouts of flame, for example. But uh, yeah, I'm sure you can think of lots of other uses for them as well. So, speaking of other uses, we, we can also take this burning wood texture and glue that to some thick card, and all we're going to do with this is cut it into a couple of different size strips, which we can then make into little bits of splintered wood. And if I just place a few more pieces on top, we could maybe glue them into place, something like that, and, uh, and then glue a few flames in the areas where the fire pattern is the brightest. So, in this example, here would be a good spot. Anyway, if I just clear the table quickly, here's one that I've made earlier, and it's the exact same process as before, but this time the wood is acting as the base. And if I go ahead and bring in one of the floor tiles from episode 51, and place a couple of these in the corners, we can use them to indicate that this room is on fire perhaps. So uh, yeah, that's the idea. Though, if you like, you could do a similar thing and glue a few small planks into a kind of asterisk shape, then glue a few small flames on top, and now we have a little campfire. Um, it's not a fantastic model, but I think it's good enough. Anyway, let's move on to something a bit more fancy. Okay then, in this next part, we're going to make a stone brazier. So, to begin with, we'll glue these two textures to some thin foam core. The stuff I'm using is 3mm thick. And, uh, and when they're dry, we'll cut those out with a sharp knife. Next, we'll cut a strip of the plain stone texture that's the same thickness as the foam core. Then we'll apply some glue to the back, and simply wrap that around the edge, to cover the exposed foam. And that should result in this kind of thing. And we'll need to do that to both pieces. Okay, next we'll glue this texture to some thick card, and, uh, and once that's had plenty of time to dry, we'll cut that to size as well. Then we'll take a piece of cardboard or foam core, and in the one direction we'll make this the same width as the piece that we just made, and in the other direction it needs to be around 15mm, or 5 eighths of an inch. 
and all we're going to do with this is wrap it in more of the plain stone pattern, like you've seen me do in lots of the other videos, so that it ends up looking something like this. And then, for the final part, we'll glue the stone pattern around a large drinking straw, and cut out a piece that's roughly 10 millimeters long, which is about 3 eighths of an inch. Right then, now for the assembly. So, we'll first glue the plain foam core piece on top of the cardboard piece, and, uh, and with this, we're aiming to have it so that the back of the foam core is flush with one of the longer edges of the cardboard. So, the kind of thing that you can see here. Then we'll apply some hot glue to the back of those pieces and glue those to the bottom of the archway, which should end up looking something like that. Next, we'll apply some glue to the inside of the straw and stick that on top of the little plinth. And uh, we're also going to make sure that it's pushed up against the archway piece. So, this kind of thing. And finally, we'll apply some more glue to the other end of the straw and the back of the last foam core piece, and stick that last piece on top. And there you go, there's a kind of stone brazier that's set against a wall. Then, like before, it's just a matter of adding a few flames to the top. So uh, yeah, that's another option that we have with these. Okay, for this last piece, we're first going to glue this texture to some more thick card, and then cut it out with a sharp pair of scissors. Then we'll take some of the regular wall texture and glue that around an empty toilet roll tube. And uh, if you're wondering, you can find this texture in the very first episode. Anyway, from that we'll cut out a strip that's one and a half inches, roughly 38 millimeters long. However, the height needs to be the same as the combined height of your floor tiles and your walls. So as a quick example, here's one of my own floor tiles. And uh, as you can see, if I rest it against the side, it's the same height. Well, maybe a tiny bit bigger, just to allow for a slight clearance. Now, to make things easier to assemble, I like to put a mark on the back of both of these that's roughly in the middle. So, for the toilet roll strip, that's easy enough to measure out, but uh, for the circular piece, it's roughly in the position that you can see here. So, the very edge of this particular stone. Okay then, so, I think the easiest way to glue it together is to put a spot of hot glue on the location mark near the end of the round piece and use that to kind of tack the wall section into place. So, something like you can see here. Then it's easy enough to tack both of the ends into place using a similar technique, which is exactly what you can see me doing. And when that's done, I like to run a line of hot glue along the inside edge, just to make sure it stays together. And this is the kind of thing we should be left with if it's all gone according to plan. And the idea for these is to create some little circular alcoves and niches that can line the walls of our rooms and passages, you know, without them taking up any of the playable floor space. Anyway, next we're going to make some of the metal braziers from back in episode 5. So, uh, this is pretty much the same thing that you saw back then, but with one slight difference. So. Instead of using the whole piece that's been glued to the drinking straw, instead, we're only going to be using one of the very ends. So, this tiny piece that you can see here. But, uh, like I say, it's the same thing really, just a lot shorter. Anyway, here I am gluing the three pieces together, and, uh, and that should result in something like this. So, it's, uh, it's fairly straightforward stuff. Now, the next part is up to you. You could leave it as a separate piece and just rest it on top of one of the niches and do a similar thing with the flames and keep those separate as well. Basically, the sort of thing that you can see here. Or, if you're more like me, you might prefer to glue everything together. Just so that you don't have to worry about it getting knocked over during play. But, uh, like I say, it's up to you. And if I bring in the dungeon tile again, this is the kind of thing we can do to, to make a simple passage look a bit more interesting. Though, obviously, you can use these niches for other things as well, and here's one with a few bits and pieces from some of my other projects. And similarly, we can utilise the flames in a few other ways. For example, here's a broken table that's also caught fire. But yeah, I, uh, I think that's all I've got for this one, so 
Here's a picture of some of the pieces that I've made, though do feel free to join the Discord or the community page over on Facebook and post some pictures of your own as it's always good to see how other people are putting some of this stuff to use. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Um, as always, I'd really appreciate it if you would consider giving the video a like, you know, if you have liked it that is, and I'll, uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.